Uh, hi, Liz. <laughs> Hello. I'm, I, I'm, I'm so excited to speak with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> a little starstruck sometimes. Um, I think the last time I had to kind of phone in with my interview questions with you. So I'm glad we get to do this live and direct. That's fantastic. I'm going to try to keep this fun, but I'm also going to ask some real questions. Okay. First off, I know some people want to know what's going on with Donna and Henry, but I want to know what's going on with Donna and Dale. I feel like there was some t sexual tension between these two for a while. And I saw the way that Donna was looking at old boy when he was stuck in the wall. Like, was I on to something or am I reading too much into Donna? And You're reading too much. Oh, okay. much. She just, he, he, just, he irritates her. <laughs> but I think like, it's like anybody, like anybody who's, like, they've been there probably, a re he was there before her, I think, Dale. So they've been there, they've been through the, the bad shit before Boyd started implementing things to try, like the ta finding the talismans. So they've been there a long time together. So I think even if you are not, she doesn't hate him, but he just bugs. He drives her nuts. Um, but I think whenever you've been like, it's a loss. It's still a loss, and it's just such a shocking. Like, it's a shocking loss because because of the manner of the death. So that was what was happening to. Okay. Well, I know you two are married in real life, so Cliff yeah. is always welcome to join in on this. Okay. <laughs> um, how much of what we see on screen is Donna, and how much of what we see is Liz? Like, I know you're you're like an acting instructor, so I wonder how much do you get to infuse of yourself into your on screen character? Well, I think there's a like there is a lot. It's it's that there's a side of Liz that there's a lot of in Donna, and then there's things. Like it's all Liz to me. To me, acting is all you. Uh, it's all the person you. It, it's your responses to other people. It's just that I have to. You go. What is the perspective? What's the background? And how do I feel about this person and what they're doing? And and there's a. So that becomes Donna, but there's also a way of standing with Donna. Like, I physically find, I physically found her. Oh. I've lost him. No, no. Hold oh, on. it said battery exhausted. Oh, I've got, I always keep a spare. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, she just, it, like, it's like she walks the planet differently than me, but it uh, it's all got to come, come from me. It's, there's some characters in other shows where I find things that, I go that you know that I can kind of play on or whereas Donna is sort of like the me if if other things had taken place in life and I'd become a different person but it's me I like the way you put that okay but I don't behave like her in real life <laughs> parts I know well season three shows us a new side of donna right like we see donna struggling with hope and despair a, a lot more openly can you talk about that inner conflict like were there any behind the scenes discussions about this because it feels like a lot of residents of town have been on a seesaw of emotions when it comes to hope and despair um i don't think we, we didn't have conversations per se about it as a whole and we had just a very brief conversation at the top of the um, the season. Jack Bender said that he wanted to start seeing some other colors from Donna in terms of where her reactions were, how her reactions were. Um, but that's also coming from the writer. So obviously they've made a decision to start writing in um, that different behavior. And I think it's just they needed to see the break, the, the walls cracking. So I, I have one other thing I wanted to ask. And, and you can let me know if you can't answer this one. I understand. But fans really love to theorize about Fromp and try to piece together the mysteries of this town. Yeah. Do you have any theories of your own about the mysteries? And could you please share them? 
I do have theories. They sh they do share. A lot of my theories, or my main kind of theory, is that this is a metaphor for life. That's my theory, and I have no idea if I'm right because John doesn't tell you. But I think it's like the the thing that the scary the monsters, whether they be physical ones we see or the creepy things that are happening that they're all manifestations of what fear is and our own traumas but they they actually they have now they have shown up in this show as as physical things that affect people there's so many objects in this show and i i think about how objects are haunting it's not a theory like, I think anything, we attach emotions to objects. So I'm always interested in the objects I'm seeing in the show. And what they mean to people. Um, but in terms of... Like, I do think there's a lore there, but I'm not sure which one it is. When I look at, like, the runic type letters, I don't know where they're... I'm always changing where I think that's coming from. That's it. I mean, if we had an hour, I could sit <laughs> up, but we don't. I can make time, but I know we don't have that time right now. Not today. Not today. Thank you so much for your time. I know you're really busy. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Likewise. Ms. Saunders, I I'm look forward to live tweeting with you on Sunday. Have a, have a great okay. rest of the day. Okay. All right. Thanks.